Hurry up! Everyone else is already there! I called out to Ryan, who was in the bathroom. The door swung open, and he walked out, pulling his swimsuit up over his underwear. Ready, he said as he grabbed his sandals. Is everyone else really at the pool? We were, like, just dismissed. He was right. Our boy choir conductor had told us that after our performance that evening, the hotel decided to move our choir to the suite building, free of charge. Taylor said there's a sauna and a steam room, I explained excitedly. We'd never been able to stay in a hotel as nice as this, and the fact that we were touring England and got upgraded for free, we boys were ecstatic. I grabbed our room key and ran out the door down the stairs. Ryan was in awe thinking about the steam room. I had to stop him from running too quickly down the halls. We made it down to the pool patio and greeted our fellow chorister comrades. After cannonballing, yeah, of course. I'm surprised your swim mask can fit on with that big of a nose, Caleb said to Ryan as he rose from the water. Ryan didn't laugh. Twelve of us decided to stop splashing and make use of the hotel's kindness. The high school juniors and seniors chose to check out the outdoor pool, probably hoping to find some teen chicks to hit on. We shivered into the sauna first. Ryan coughed upon entering. <laughs> it smells like medicine, he wheezed while I found two spaces for us on the wooden benches. Caleb made a crude joke about Ryan being in a burning room like this and how it correlated to his religion. The group laughed. Ryan brushed it off, but I knew he wasn't a big fan of the Jewish jokes directed towards him. I always thought it was pretty cool how he was able to take things like that so well. I was only in 7th grade, so I wasn't as mature as a freshman like him quite yet. We all started coughing from the wood burning behind us, so we decided to change rooms. Our clump waddled out, briskly slapped on our chests by the cool outer air. We jumped into the even colder swimming pool, plunging into what felt like ice water. Wait up, Ryan whispered to me as the group went on. I remembered that he had asthma, so he wanted to get some deep breaths in before continuing into the steam room. Soon, we joined our friends inside. Immediately, the experience was better than the sauna. The boiling water in the air smelled like lavender, and instead of being stifling, it cleared our sinuses. The soothing heat was a blessing to our larynxes, which were exhausted from the past four days singing throughout the United Kingdom. We stayed in there for a while before the boys started leaving. Hey, let's head back to the room, Taylor suggested to Thomas. He agreed, and he said bye to Caleb, who didn't respond. His head was drooped forward. They left, and soon the only people inside were Caleb, Ryan, and myself. Ryan started coughing again, so I got up to leave and motioned towards the door. We should wait for Caleb to wake up, he said. I told him how he, sh he shouldn't worry about Caleb because of how mean he was to him, and that he needed to look out for himself because of his asthma. You can't ever leave a friend alone, David. I asked him to elaborate. Remember how my brother's in the army? Well, he came back from Afghanistan in May, and he told me how he saved someone's life. My brother and another were in charge of the watchtower. Because they had experienced a power outage, they had to use a generator. His friend insisted that he could handle the situation alone, but my brother wouldn't leave. After a few minutes of being near the carbon monoxide emissions, his partner fell to the floor. My brother took his friend outside. I was shocked. Not only was Ryan cool, but his brother was too. Ryan started coughing again, so I told him to wait while I got a choir parent. After bringing her in, she went over to Caleb and insisted on Ryan coming out. He helped carry Caleb outside before returning to our room. After breakfast the next day, we asked Caleb what happened the day before. Oh, so you guys stayed behind? Thanks, he said shyly. I passed out from the amount of water in my lungs since I wasn't able to breathe properly. If you guys didn't stay, he coughed and didn't finish the sentence. I told Ryan how he should tell his brother what happened and how proud he would be of him, especially since Ryan overcame Caleb's animosity towards him to help. Ryan grinned and said he was glad to be able to help. From then on, I learned, from, uh, I learned to think from other people's point of view, like how Ryan thought Caleb would feel if he were left alone. Now, an objective I always keep in mind is how I can be there for others just like Ryan's was and is to this day. Ryan Russo, leave no man behind. Thank you.